There, welcome to Gaining Vision. I'm Melanie. Thanks so much for clicking. To my returning subscribers, thank you so much for coming back and for your continuous love and support. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please feel at home. And please take a second, hit subscribe, and please don't forget to like and share. I don't know if you've been paying attention to everything going on in South Africa over the last week with the EFF 10th anniversary celebrations. I was really intrigued to see how intentional the EFF was in creating the different events for different audiences. They had the gala event, the dinner event for the business sector. They also had the breakfast for the international ambassadors and then of course the rally for everybody. And the focus of each event was very specific to their audience. And today I want to talk about the breakfast for the international ambassadors. I was quite impressed with how they handled this whole event and their messaging for the international audience. EFF is a South Africa's movement with a progressive internationalist outlook which seeks to engage with global progressive movements. We believe that the best contribution we can make in the international struggle against global imperialism is to rid our country of imperialist domination. For the South African struggle, the EFF pillars for economic emancipation are the following. Expropriation of South Africa's land without compensation for equal redistribution in use. Nationalization of mines, banks and other strategic sectors of the economy without compensation. Building state and government capacity which will lead to the abolishment of tender system. Free quality education, health care, houses and sanitation. Massive protected industrial development to create millions of sustainable jobs, including the introduction of minimum wage in order to close the wage gap between the rich and the poor, close the apartheid wage gap and promote rapid career path from Africans in the, for Africans in the workplace. Massive developments for the African economy and advocating for a move from reconciliation to justice in the entire continent. Open, accountable, corrupt, free government and society without fear of victimization by the state agencies. Over and above pillars, the EFF commits to further pillars to complement the seven. They are equally important pillars and are presented here, not in order of importance and vitality, but the recognition that they are equally important. We believe in decentralized special development and building new cities, public representatives using public services, reduction of benefits for public representatives, progressive internationalism, the development of sports, arts and culture, progressive views on the gender and sexuality question, meaning acceptance of different forms of gender and sexual expressions, consideration, considering the rise of right-wing politics, which form the basis of electoral opportunism all around the world and now in South Africa, the EFF has a progressive view on the immigration question, and we believe that we are all global citizens, especially in Africa, where borders were created from colonial conquest and divisions created in the Berlin Conference of 1884. As the EFF, we believe in monetary and fiscal stability, which is anchored on industrialization and deliberate state intervention in the economy. They did a lot about sharing with the audience who the EFS was and they wanted to do this so the international audience would hear directly from them from the horse's mouth if you like to say about who the F EFF is why they were created and what their intention and platform is going to be as they move forward the delegates gathered all of coming from all over South Africa and decided to form this organization they formed this organization because they said the ruling party was suffering from ideological zigzags and open dominance of neoliberal right-wing politics were characterizing the ruling party at the time. The ruling party was suffering from lack of integrity and credibility and it was alienating anything that was advancing a left perspective. The trade union was compromised. The Communist Party was compromised. The youth movement was killed. The Women's League was co-opted into the agenda of neoliberalism. South Africa at the time was characterized by a kleptocracy 
where those who were aligned with the government of the day could not face prosecution for their corruption. We observed all of this and decided, but we cannot sit back and allow the continuation of the deterioration of state of affairs in our country. And inspired by the Cuban 26 July movement, decided to form an organization on the 26th of July 2013 and called it the EFF. Now, Julius Malema is a straight shooter and says it how it is and doesn't hold punches. He was very straight on many topics, including his platform of how the party is there to serve the people. But members of the diplomatic committee, you should know that the EFF is a Marxist, Leninist and Fanonian organization meaning we subscribe to the ideological and theoretical framework of these scholars and revolutionaries in terms of how we seek to forge a revolution and govern our society. We are an internationalist, radical, militant, a non-sexist and a pan-Africanist organization, and we operate under the principle of socialism. The EFF is a leftist, anti-capitalist, anti-imperialist movement with an internationalist outlook anchored by popular grassroots formation and struggles. The EFF is a vanguard of community and worker struggles and will always be on the side of the people. They talk about many different topics at, on the manifesto and share with the international their perspectives on international issues. They're not, he wasn't talking, being afraid of anything. He spoke about the war with Russia and Ukraine, many different international countries such as Cuba, Palestine, different African countries, and their perspective on how things should happen. He also talked about the importance of collaborating with or people and companies that can get the job done for the right things that the country needs, not about looking for the best price or corruption. They really focused on the intention of getting things done for South Africa. This was their intention, focusing again, once again, on the people. As he did his speech and talked about all these different topics, he was very clear to the point. But what I really loved most about this entire event was how open and orchestrated the question section was. He opened the floor to have any ambassador, any person in attendance ask questions for clarification, to make suggestions, and also to get the perspective of the EFF. Thank you very much, Commander-in-Chief and the President of Economic Freedom Fighters in Africa. Now we're going to move to our next item, which is question and answer session. I'm going to take five hands in the first round. We may ask any question or clarity or suggestion that you have. I'll take the first round. This was great. They asked many different questions, such as coalitions, load shedding, how their points of view were on the war in Mozambique, etc. There were so many questions, and once again, Julius Malema spoke straight with ease and confidence, speaking on behalf of the party. Good morning. Thank you very much, Mr. Malema. I'm David Guy. I'm the Australian Deputy High Commissioner. Um, Country? Australia. Australia. Um, my question is if don't win a majority next year, what would your approach be to building coalitions? Thank you. Thank you. My name is uh, Han Peters. I'm the ambassador of the Netherlands in this country. Um, I think without any doubt, the energy crisis is top of mind for most South Africans. So what's the plan of the EFF for ending load shedding? Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, my name is Håkan Juhl, the Swedish ambassador. and. Uh, since EFF is known as an international movement, uh, I would like to know more about your closest allied on the European and Asian continent when it comes to political movements that you share values with. Thank you very much. Um, with regard to the coalitions, um, our, our preferred approach would have been that we should consolidate all the opposition parties and then establish a new government and remove the corrupt ANC which has put us to where we are, all of us. 
But the problem is that you have a, an opposition parties that say we should come together to the exclusion of the EFF, and there's no reason why. Um, because we, have, we are not just saying we want to work with the opposition. We gave the opposition power in the metros in 2016 against the ANC. We were the ones who removed the ANC. That's how much we have demonstrated our commitment to bringing an alternative government in South Africa. But the oppositions, when it was now the turn to include the EFF, they excluded the EFF. And worse, at the local level, because at the local level, it's not more about ideological questions. It's more about service delivery to our people. We can be Marxist and Leninist, can be right or left, but when people need clean water, it has got nothing to do with ideological question. Deliver the water. We can end load shedding um, in South Africa. Firstly, you have to fight corruption. Uh, car power ships were signed a long time ago to come and intervene. But wives of ministers and ministers wanted to get their hands in, in those deals. And without them being involved, the deals fell flat. Mozambique has got a number of megawatts to provide to South Africa. As long as they don't have their hands in that, they will never approve of Mozambique's intervention to any additional megawatts to the grid is something positive to South Africa. And we are a nation with a serious crisis. We shouldn't even be thinking about ourselves as individuals. We should now be thinking about um, how do we get more energy into the grid and not about more money to me and my family. The coal power stations that were decommissioned will recommission them. Because you can't decommission a power station for green energy that gives you less than what that power station was giving you. It's illogical. We are all for green. We are all for clean energy. But not at the detriment of the economy of South Africa. We cannot destroy our base to appease USA and the UK. Less gr if the green gives me 2,000 megawatts, Whatever I'm going to decommission should be giving me 2,000 megawatts or even less. So I know I decommissioned this one and the alternative is this one and therefore I don't run short of what I'm requiring uh, to sustain the economy of South Africa and to give our people a reliable uh, electricity. Our alliances are naturally the leftist countries. China is one of the countries we look up to. Um, Cuba is one of the countries we look up to. And uh, Russia, we've got historical ties with it. We know that Putin is not at uh, the left, but his attitude against imperialist forces um, finds resonance with the EFF. And those are the kind of people we'll rely on. BRICS is one such a structure that we regard very highly. And uh, we see uh, the emergence of BRICS as an alternative platform to engage in the geopolitics. This was a great opportunity for the ambassadors to learn about what EFF is really all about. There's no gray lines here. It's straight to the point because this is how the EFF wanted to communicate their message to the international community. Because unfortunately, they usually hear about EFF through biased media sources that show right side and left side and show them as corrupt and as bloodthirsty, et cetera, et cetera. All of these perceptions that have been painted in the international community. But EFF was very clever in getting this message across. So we thought as we celebrate its 10 years today, we must and share some few moments with the international community which gets to learn about the EFF from a hostile neoliberal media, which creates an impression that the EFF is an organization that is characterized by violence, that is not different from 
all other anarchist organizations that the EFF cannot be relied upon because it is not based on anything tangible. They also invited all the ambassadors to attend the rally to learn more. Finally, what I really appreciated as a, somebody from an international community was all the education that I learned in this event. Now, I wasn't in attendance, I was watching it on YouTube, but I learned a lot about what their policies and procedures were. And I've had the opportunity to read their manifesto. And I'm quite intrigued. I'm impressed to see how they'll carry it out. And I really love the fact it is definitely about the people. Now, I will be taking time to read the manifestos for all of the political parties in the election because I think it's important for all of us to educate ourselves, to find out what each person's platform is, and to really understand what it is, if you're in South Africa, what you're looking to get out of a party and hope for the best of that country. Now, as an international person, I want to understand what's happening in the world and understand how, the South, how South Africa, depending on which organization will win the election, how it's going to interact with the international community. So it is important for all of us to do our research, to educate ourselves. But I will say, I have to give credit to the way EFF handled themselves and their intention. They're very focused on what they wanted to accomplish through the celebrations. And I think if all parties across the globe did this, we would get to the point and stay straight, fact on, and make sure they were all educated so that everybody can make an informed decision. I encourage you all to do your research. I'd love to hear your feedback and your thoughts. Have you checked out this breakfast event? If not, take some time, watch it. Let me know your thoughts. As well as, have you read the manifesto? Have you explored other options in South African election? I'd love to hear that feedback as well. So let's have a conversation. Let's have an open dialogue. Let's educate ourselves across the globe. And until next time, if you haven't already, please take a second, hit subscribe, like and share, and of course, don't forget to hit that notification button so you'll be notified each and every time I upload new content. Until next time, we'll see you later, bye.